Well, howdy friends, Brian Flushing and Matter for Outfitters in the Midwest Fly Fishing Schools, and welcome back to another one of our product review slash tutorials slash special guest, Kelly Gallo. That's me. an industry as far as I'm concerned and you not only with your flies but when I was a kid growing up and when I first started in the industry 31 years ago we sold a few sinking lines a year yeah a literally year. a year yeah. and people people thought that they were for lake fishing and lake trolling fishing yeah. or trolling right yeah. only and with the with the introduction of the book, which I read in when, 1999? Yep. I read that, I read this book, I bought one of the original Jim Teeny yep. sinking lines that you did. I went to the Mad River with a yellow fly, which I really had Thanks. never fished before, <laughs> and I got the biggest fish I've ever caught on the Mad. And I never, ever, ever thought about using a sinking line in a stream before. Yeah. It is, so, you opened up a whole new world to uh, to all of us anglers, and but still to this day, when I talk about fishing a sink tip or a, a, a sinking line on the Mad River in Ohio, mm -hmm. for example, people think I'm crazy. Yeah. It's two foot. It's you, you, there's no way you can't fish a sinking line. Let's talk about that a little bit, and then I want you to talk about your lines that you do through airflow. But. A lot of misconceptions about that. A, and the, the biggest part of that is they think that we throw them out and let them sink like that. And as you know, we throw them out and we start actively retrieving very yeah. quickly. So you can take a 200 grain line and you could fish in two footer. I mean, the Madison's not very deep and, no. it's, and we fish them you know, very effectively. Really, the line is more about carrying the bigger fly. And so the mm -hmm. sink thing, it carries the fly easier, you know, so it's more accurate and it's less, less casting. And you really shouldn't be false casting these very much at all. I prefer the longer heads simply because the original ones were full sink, as you remember, they were, the whole line was. But Correct. you're still, it didn't matter. You throw it out, you start your retrieve, and you fly, it, it doesn't matter. If you want it to fish two foot, you can wait a second and it'll go down. If you really start retrieving it, you're six inches deep, you mm -hmm. know? And so, the original ones were basically, uh, you know, Jimmy, we did them with Cortland, and they were 200 grains, I think, almost all. I don't remember. I can't. I think we had a 150 and a 200. I think that's right. Yeah. And they were full sinking all the way through. You know, and the lines, and I made a mistake once when I was talking about these, about how we judge these, how they're, I said 200, I said it's 250 uh, grains per inch. Or I forget what I was trying to say. Which is not true. It's not true. It's the whole head. Yeah. And well, actually, it's on these. It's the whole line. But you know, and you weigh the whole thing. You can either, you can fish these fast, and you don't have to be deep. And they, the the lines were basically set up for rods, right? There. So it's a 200. I've got, you know, we we did a bunch of them. 200 grains, 250s, and that's more again to bend the rod, flex the rod. But you'll carry, even on a 200, you'll carry any fly we fish, right? Mm -hmm. And it really isn't about sink rate. And that's the biggest misconception is everybody goes, you know, and first of all, we don't very often fish deep. And that's a huge misconception, like we're dredging the bottom of these. You go and dredge with lines, you're going to use up lines. You'll mm -hmm. lose them, right? Yeah. So and most flies. of the time, yeah, we're retrieving the fly actively. So they're built for the rod. So I got the regular 300 or, or 200 to 300 you know, six weights, 200s, uh, sevens, 250s. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of the workhorse of the, of the lines. And then I was on the White River one day, it was giant. And I mean, it was so, it was 17 foot of vertical rise, right? And I'm throwing these lines, beautiful sunny days, and it's just giant. And I had a lot of time because there was nobody around and I'm fishing and I'm just watching. I'm, I'm on these big pool because everything was big. I mean, 17 foot extra waters. You know, you're searching out stuff, and I'm, I'm hunting a lot of different stuff. And I started watching these lines, and I noticed that 
all, no matter what fly, it seemed to have a belly in it. And I really wanted my line, the front, to go down. Mm -hmm. And I came up with this line called the shovel head, which has the, the, the heaviest sinking line you can make in the front seven and nine feet, right? So this is a 280, it's a 280 and a 330, you know, and you can fish it. And, and when I built the line, I, I laminated, I, you know, I welded the lines together. And I was cutting lines, I had all kinds of lines with me, and I had a lot of time, fishing was kind of tough. And so I started making them right there on the river. And the front half of this line, and so I just kept taking giant chunks of 330 and 350 and 400 grain lines and I was cutting them in pieces and making front. And so these lines are absolutely reverse. And it's, so the front of it is, you know, like a 400 grain line for seven feet. And then it goes to 250, then it goes to 200. Mm -hmm. So they're absolutely tapered lines, which has never been done with these things, but it's backwards. And when I built the thing, I sent it to Tim and he goes, well, I think your schematic's backwards. And I said, <laughs> I says, no. no. And he said, that thing's gonna cast like shit. And I go, no, it really doesn't. And I'm telling you that this line, Johnny took out the first one, the first prototype, and his girlfriend, Rosie, this little tiny thing, broke her line, she had a 250, or 200, I mean, put a 280 on it. It, it increased her, her ability to cast the accuracy was unbelievable. And it, it's so hard to believe, it, but these lines, if you're running, especially if you're running the big musky flies and stuff like that, <clears throat> that front end drops so quick and you, but you don't get any of that lag. Mm -hmm. And so the whole idea of the shovel head is it drops the front of the fly line quicker, which gets the fly in that zone quicker. And it's just, so those really, you know, you take a, a big D and D or something like, or double deceivers or any of that, and they're, they're, they're pretty buoyant or triple done, yeah. any of that stuff. They're pretty buoyant. So you can, this lag thing was happening. And so we use really short leaders. The front end goes down quick. Your fly's in that zone. Still doesn't have to go deep, just like with mm -hmm. these. Don't have to fish deep but it'll get that fly quicker down there. That's all it was for. Absolutely for, for big flies. I, I would say I run the shovel head almost exclusively now, even on the Madison. I, I think it's one of the most misunderstood lines out there. Um, and maybe because you designed it backwards. Yeah. And people. <laughs> well, Tim Ray Jeff's pretty good at this stuff. And he yeah. says, and he even wrote it in the scripture when we sent it to Europe. And he says, this is Kelly's new line. Probably will cast like <laughs> so, and it's backwards it, it, but it's backwards just it, go with but him, it, it's you know Kelly. what yeah. it's the new it, it's just a different thought process <clears throat> and it it absolutely works it's to the point where that's pretty much all we fish and uh is that a good lake line or maybe a great lake line it depends on what you're going to do with it if, okay. if you're going to if you're trolling uh it does get down a little faster I, I tend not to be so much on the lake with it just because I fish so shallow on the lake. You know, I'm either, mm -hmm. I'm either bobber fishing or I'm fishing up high. I don't, if I was out on like the uh, Lake Michigan or something where I had to get down. Lake Erie. Right, lake Erie, yeah. carrying a bigger fly. Uh, expect lake Erie, musky, oh my God. I mean, that would be, it would, it hums. And if you've cast one of these things, single roll, pick up, drop it and go, and it's gonna go as far as you, <laughs> it goes. Yeah. You know, it's just like all, all heads, you know, that integrated heads or independent heads, you know, they're separate, it, it, it flies. I've been selling it as, as a bass line for mm. throwing, uh, you know, a plastic worm type yeah. stuff and, no. and bottom bouncing. Pat Ehlers has some great uh, bottom bouncing jig, sure. jig type flies. And I think it's great for that, so. Um, I, can, I can imagine, especially out on the big lake, yeah. I can imagine how far, but it would be, it, it's just, it's a better tool than trying to fight, a, you know, it just goes better. Yeah. And so. I, I think one of the things that people, um, that I tell people often, I've heard you say this, and this is probably, I probably got it from you, um, that I think it's important to stress um, that a sinking line stops sinking the moment you start stripping. Yeah. You can fish this line in six inches of water. I, I just did it for eight hours yeah. the past two days. Yeah. I'm putting the fly an inch from the bank and this line helps me to do that. I can do oh. this, I can do it better. Sinking with that lines line. are so much more accurate and, and you touched on tips and I, you asked me about that earlier. I mean, from a floating line perspective, to try to duplicate the accuracy is almost impossible, yeah. especially with a big fly. I mean, it just simp it's so simple, the line carries the fly. Sink tips, I'm, I, I kinda, I, they have to be at least 
17 to 20 feet long for me to like because they tend to get, people think they'll cast like a dry line. That's not true. They don't. They no. double hinge, they've got sway plates. I'd rather have a full sinking line than a tip personally. Okay. And that's why all my heads are 30 feet. So c can we and our viewers fish the streamer max long? Can we fish this in a small stream? Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. There, there you have it. There's, so. there's the answer. So, I mean, in my estimation, um, these are the, you know, these are your, your two choices. And you say you're using this I run one? a 280 uh, on all my seven weights now. I don't run, I hardly ever run it, the standard lines. And on my six weights, I still run the, the 200 grain. Because yeah. that's usually on foot. Uh, I just find this this 280, it, it for my style, it mm -hmm. just flips over. And there's people that don't, you know, they, they don't like it as much. Johnny likes it way better. I mean, Johnny fishes more than anybody I know with streamers. And, and he, you know, and he kind of got me into it because mm -hmm. I was a little hesitant to run it all the time. Yeah. I just thought it was going to be a bigger fly thing. And I started running it on my like cougars and stuff like that. And I pretty much gravitated. That's all I use. Wow. I mean, for it's just more accurate. It's easier. It's a fit, faster roll pickup. That single cast distance means nothing. I, you know, I, I fish pretty tight anyway. I'm usually never over 30 I feet. I can imagine so. it's just going to go. It I just mean, does. Yeah. It's just so easy to pick up and done. Yeah. So and it and it's easy. It keeps the fly in the right depth. And, well, and, it, and the one thing people are afraid of is they think that it has to be an advanced caster. And I can tell you, regardless, I mean, regardless of these lines, I have never seen an intermediate caster that doesn't cast it better than a floating line. Mm -hmm. It's a super misconception. But remember, you do not false cast these lines. Ever. <laughs> you, you don't false cast. A single <laughs> cast and go. And it's over. One and, one and done. And, uh, you know, we, we did a little casting thing here the past couple days, yeah, yeah. which will be on the channel soon. And, uh, and I think that'll be a big help to folks and hopefully take some of the mystery out of, of sinking lines. So Some of the uh, fear. Yeah. Well, Don't I, fear the line. I, I got to tell you, once again, as we started this conversation, um, <laughs> back when I first, and even it was until the book came out, until Modern Streamers for Trophy Trout came out, and it's still an uphill battle. Mm -hmm. um, and Every but, day. but I can tell you the number, uh, we're probably getting close. That might be a stretch, but, um, you know, whereas we used to sell five or six sinking tips or sinking lines a year. Yeah. I mean, it's now five or six a day. Yeah, it's crazy. So, so it's, it's a, and again, thanks to you, and a lot of people have bought into this, myself mm -hmm. included. Yeah. I mean, once I learned this, uh, again, in 1999, once I learned this and realized, uh, uh, thanks to the book, that I could fish a sinking line in a stream, uh, as well as bass. And it taught me a lot about and bass not, fishing. And not be caught up on the bottom and not, not all the things people think is going to happen. And smallmouth fishing. Yeah. Um, they are just the most versatile lines for smallmouth fishing, which we've talked about before, is basically the same thing that we do for brown yeah. trout. Identical. Um, uh, sands the popper thing in the, mm -hmm. in the evenings and stuff that we do. So it's, it, it's you, you have really pioneered an industry. I think a lot of other folks in our region, folks like Jerry Darkus, um, there's just been a ton of other people that have ad adopted this and, mm -hmm. and integrated it into their daily fishing. I fish sinking lines, actually, because I've been doing a lot of musky. I've been doing a lot of smallmouth. I fish up on Lake Erie a lot. I do a lot of bass. Mm -hmm. And then when I come out here, I prefer to streamer fish um, because I just love banging the banks of the Madison. I probably fish sinking lines more than I fish floating lines anymore these I days. I know that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks, man. All right, buddy. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate it, man. All right. Thank you. You bet. Thanks for watching, friends. As always, we appreciate it. Stay tuned for more with Kelly Gallup. Here from the Slide In, be sure to check out slidein.com as well as madriveroutfitters.com to pick up your own airflow sinking fly lines. Get out there, give them a try, let the line do the work. Uh, don't work too hard or you're going to kill it. Don't false cast. Don't false cast. <laughs> <laughs> uh, be sure to subscribe to our channel, friends. That really helps us out a lot. Hit the like button. That makes us feel good and we like to feel good. And stay tuned. We've got a lot more coming at you. If you like this video, hit subscribe. It helps out a lot. And check out these videos. We think you might like them too.